I'm Sean from Offload Rugby Media. I'm Simeon from the TikTok Ref. Guys, I'm Murray, also known as Boss for Rugby HQ. And you're listening to the Rugby Connection Podcast. For the fans, by fans. Hello and welcome to episode 5 of Interview Thursday. This week we have TikTok sensation Harvey Allen. Harvey, thank you for coming on the show. How are you That's getting on? no problem. Uh, I'm alright, thank you. How old are you? I'm all right, yeah. Just enjoying the lovely Scottish weather. It's a rare sight. Oh, so. shush. It's terrible <laughs> down here. <laughs> well, you always get a nice down there, so it's time we get it. So, Yeah, fair <laughs> enough. We'll let you have it for this weekend. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Can I have it back when I go up there? <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you move up here, then yeah, we could keep it. Yeah, I grant. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'll, I'll start with the first questions. Uh, Harvey, how, what got you into Rugby League and Union? Because I know you're a big league fan as well. Oh, um, so Union, I've I've discussed it before on my page. Um, Union was sort of a mix of my, my late granddad and also my school. So it was around the age of about 11 um, that I discovered rugby and... I don't think I ever turned back from it. It was it was something. It was the first time I sort of really sort of did something and just felt a part of it automatically. Yeah, and sort of just thought this might be alright for me. <laughs> so um, no, I honestly and that was Union down in my school because I lived in the south. And then um, the first time I watched league, it was um, the Super League Good Friday matches. Oh yeah. Um, it was it was a derby day. They had a double header with Hull FC versus KR and. Wigan versus St Helens, and both matches were just pulsating like end to end, and I just I couldn't get enough of it. So I absolutely I after that I kind of just went about rugby league as if it was just second nature to me. Yeah, fair enough. Good answer. I like that. <laughs> can't, can't really but what position do you currently play? Do you still play? Um, I am still playing. Yeah. Um, not every week. I have other sports, but um. I've been playing as a winger or even a scrum half lately, and I'm six foot one, so I've no clue how I ended up in that situation. But, um, <laughs> Mike Phillips. Yeah, but I don't, I don't mind playing scrum half. I, I don't know. I think that might be my thing. If I get back to the season in September and they put it scrum half, I won't be complaining. No, fair enough. It's quite nice to hear right. about a tall scrum half for a change. Yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Sean, you've got Conor Murray over there. I mean, a lot of kids must take off that. I yeah. mean, he's a bit slow to the a bit slow to the breakdown, but I mean... <laughs> <laughs> that's maybe that's uh, yeah, maybe that's just him. <laughs> <laughs> um, Harvey, sure. While we're at you, obviously you mentioned you play. Um, which is your favorite code of rugby? Is it League Union or do you even like sevens or? Um, I'm gonna say Union for the sake of the podcast. Um, <laughs> no, um, I've I've played both, and if I'm brutally honest, I really enjoyed playing league, and it was kind of unfortunate that I didn't get to play much longer. Um, I was I was heading into an exam year, and I kind of had to focus on that, so um, I had to put something on the chopping board. But um, no, both of them will still be in my hearts. And while I watch, probably be a, I'm while uh, while I watch maybe a bit more. Union League's always still got a place in my heart. I've I just found it absolutely amazing to play. Yeah. Will you um will you go back to play league, do you think, in the future? I'd hope so. I mean university's coming around soon and that might be an opportunity to try out new things or pick up old things. So very, very well done, good answer. Um what is your do you have a favorite rugby memory? Wow, I, I commented this one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm answering my own question here. Um, yeah. Oh, so I, I'm the only one in my family who's a, a rugby fan. So I, I, you know, I'm not gonna, I, I'm not gonna say I had those memories of going when I was younger, going when I was little, and stuff like that. But my first game was big game eleven at Twickenham, and. Um, you know, me and my dad, we never went before, so I had no clue what to experience. And I got there. I'd been supporting Harlequins for about a year, but I'd never made the trip over to like West London because if you live in London, you know the transport prices are questionable. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was probably a day I probably needed in 
Christmas time or something like that. And this was just after Boxing Day, so um, we went we went then. And I remember I remember walking up the steps in Tw- in Twickenham the first time, and the atmosphere was just electric. The full eighty thousand, it felt like it felt like five hundred thousand. You have the pyrotechnics, the show. Obviously, it's you know the Harlequins' big game, but it just felt a little bit more special to me for that being my first. And honestly, I've I've been to Twickenham quite a few times since, but none of it will ever beat that first experience. Oh, you, you always remember your first. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, that's grand. Um, my question to you is: obviously, you cover on your TikToks all sports practically like you'll do anything i know we've spoken you'll watch anything really but yeah with from a referee perspective would you bring like some laws or how things are done from other sports into refereeing in union wow um that is a question if you ask me if i could bring any rugby laws into other sports i'd have loads but um since it's the other way around Wow, I've been put on the spot here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one thing I've one thing I've noticed, and one thing that's I don't know, it's always it's always been a pet peeve on me. The um, the scoring team receives the kickoff. Oh, so you'd keep it like sevens? I would keep it like sevens. Fair I'm, not against, I'm not against tied yet either. I I I would. I think my my big issue was it with, uh, was with it in sevens. But I think it's worth a trial in 15s. No, I it think that's fair. The, it might keep the game more equal. And I think, um, I think there's a lot to take from Rugby League as well um, in that kind of perspective. I agree with that because I did my refereeing for League and I was like, oh, there's some good stuff in this. There's some stuff we should bring over. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, I think obviously Rugby League has is, is tailored the rules quite a lot. So I think they've almost got that spot on. I think they're still obviously tailoring the rules, but there are, and there are some things I would bring from league into union. But this isn't a league rule. But I would say the scoring team kicks off, not received. No, that's fair. Oh, I get that. Yeah, especially if it's a thumping as well. Because you're, if you're absolutely dominant in the game, and that, basically all that team in that whole game would just be kicking to you and you're just scoring off for that and yeah, exactly yeah. and that's what I think it would probably uh, it would probably ease the momentum a little bit so my only argument with that is because I've done a lot of tens recently which obviously is a bit more numbers than sevens but you keep the sevens rules is I found what was happening was obviously the try scoring team still kicked off but when the war would happen see, the other team would just get turned over straight away and then it'd be really easy for them to tack and score afterwards I, 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 I'm not gonna lie. I have no knowledge about tens, so I think, <laughs> I think there's a lot. I think there's a lot to to be developed in tens. I watched the um, I watched the first ever tens tournament. Uh, I can't remember how long ago that was. Oh, that was out in um, yeah, Miami, that was that wasn't it? Southern Hemisphere. When, I thought it was someone else. No, it was the US, but oh. I'm not sure. Oh, the I'm really not sure, but um. Bermuda, that was the one. It wasn't, it wasn't the United States. It was Bermuda. The Bermuda tens. There you go. You're both um, wrong. Not America. Not not America. <laughs> yeah. Kind of like in the middle. We're in the, yeah, exactly. It's Central America. We'll take that. Um, I didn't. Uh, I watched a little bit of it. I can't say I was too excited, but I guess you know it was the first time. No one really expected how it would come out. Um, I think that's obviously probably got a little bit of refining to do, but again, I think. What's worked in smaller games such as sevens might be able to help in fifteens. So I'm I'm up for trying some of the sevens laws in fifteens. No, I think that's fair. That's a good question. Um, just coming back to when someone said that you do all the like cover so much sport. But mm-hmm. how old are you? If you don't mind me asking, Harvey. I am sixteen. You're six. How do you have <laughs> this much knowledge or watch this much sport? Because like, obviously, like we all. Follow I don't go outside. That's, that's, the, that's the reality. I don't go <laughs> No, that's, I, I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, I kind of just, I've, I've, I've had a lot of free time after exams, so I, I kind of just flicker on old matches if I'm, if I'm bored or, again, weekends. I'm, I'm not really bogged down with anything. I, I have a job, 
on a Saturday, which means I do miss quite a few matches. Um, luckily, not I didn't get to miss the second half of the Lions this weekend. So that's all you needed to see. Exactly. <laughs> so if if so, my boss, if you're watching, thank you very much. <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, yeah, honestly, I think the, the weekend's just for sport. Whatever's on from morning from morning to evening. And I think what's also good about sports being so worldwide is you can just watch anything at any time. You know, I've got NRL in the morning, then I've got probably football in the afternoon or rugby in the afternoon, then later on in the evening, America awakens and I get some of their sports. So I think it's sort of just carried throughout the day. I've got sports apps, sports news apps, and I just try and keep updated as much as possible. Well, you're doing a great job of that because, like, <laughs> the thing that caught me off guard because, like, you've said, like, you're in, like, London area. Yeah, mm-hmm. you cover the GAA. I know yeah. nothing about that. And okay. Sean obviously will know a lot more than me, but just think <laughs> how in-depth you talk about it and, like, this team's your favourite and why and these players. And I'm like, how does he know all this? And it just amazes me. So I'm going to hit you with just a quick fire one just to cover wow. all, okay. all sports, right? So your favourite team from the NRL, from the NBA, F, uh, NFL, uh, Rugby Union, so you could do Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere. And I'm going to need a recap of all this. And, so, G- right. and GAA, you've got to put GAA in there. Yeah, okay, okay. okay, so, we'll, we'll N- NRL, I'll go with the Canberra Raiders. Okay. Um, NBA, Toronto Raptors. Um, okay. NFL, Pittsburgh Steelers. Rugby Union, I'm a massive Harlequins fan, as I think a lot of people know. And then probably Southern, <laughs> Southern Hemisphere, I'm quite fond of the uh, of the Highlanders. Um, GAA, there's a team over here in London, so bang in. Um, Fair enough. <laughs> anything else? Uh, NHL. But, NHL, yeah. I'm a big I'm, I'm a big Pittsburgh Penguins fan. I've got a retro jersey on my rack. Uh, we'll go for football as well, just to get it out. Uh, unfortunately, I'm a Fulham fan. So we clicked on nothing there. Me and Harvey agreed on nothing. <laughs> I think. No, I'm I think a, same. Because in the basketball, I'm a Lakers no, we had fan. A, we had, no, me and Simeon had the Raptors. I think that's oh, right. Oh, yeah, Toronto. Yeah, yeah, Toronto. Oh, yeah, Tor- yeah, Toronto. Yeah. So I'm a Lakers fan for basketball. Uh, NRL, I'm a New Zealand Warriors fan. We could all cry about that later. I'm very sorry um, about that. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't fo- I don't follow the Super League. Uh, rugby Union I'm a big XR Chiefs or Edinburgh fan it's well known Southern Hemisphere I just enjoy watching the teams I don't really have a team yeah, I, 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 to be honest I think it's a really entertaining league and I'm, I'm so I'm so annoyed Sky didn't keep the rights to Super Rugby uh, Aotearoa yeah because that made my ear last year when rugby yeah. came on for the first time yeah. and that was the league that, I think that was a banging tournament I think rugby that was pass, amazing Rugby Pass has it now oh I um, I, I could probably talk to Rugby Pass, but last time I I texted them, they wouldn't give me a subscription. So, <laughs> <laughs> Free um, all the way. Just, just call them out again. There you go, <laughs> Rugby oh. Pass. If you if you're listening, I need a subscription. We all do. Like group. group if you're if you're listening, hire us. If, I mean, if you're listening, give us a job. Sponsor <laughs> the podcast. <laughs> um, actually, Harvey, I was going to ask you. So obviously, this is not strictly rugby related, but a lot of this right. hasn't been so far. But um, um, <laughs> covering for probably the Irish Irish listeners. So first of all, uh, I'll have to convert you to a Leitrim fan in football at some stage. I'm very sorry. <laughs> yeah, that was a heartbreaking loss that we had. Was it what two weeks ago? Yeah, that was. What's well, Mayo? Yeah, yeah, that was, that was poor. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate the condolences, but I'm sure you've answered this a million times in your TikTok comments. But um, how did you first get into GEA? Is a lot of people obviously wondering. Obviously, London has a team or whatever. But wow. Um. So I have a friend who lives a good ten minute walk away from me, and um, we were just out one day. We used to we used to have these walks during lockdown. Uh, this is before lockdown, but um, he brought out his hurley. He brought out you know, a hurling stick, and uh, obviously I was just a bit curious. Went home, researched it, found out hurling, found out Gaelic football, and honestly was just amazed by it. And the more I watched it, I think the more I was just completely mind blown by it. 
which is your favorite hurling or football? Football. I I can't hurl. <laughs> that makes two of us then. So. Did you have video of Liam Williams doing hurling? I yeah. did actually. He was, he was, was quite good. He yeah. he wasn't bad. He was not bad. Can we not get an episode without mentioning Liam Williams? Come on. <laughs> oh, don't worry, we'll come up to him more later. This is this has become a Liam Williams simping page. Oh yay. That's me that's me finished then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can go now. We're all done. Yeah. Well, isn't, Liam Har- Williams. isn't harrowing very similar to Shinty? I know it's a Scottish sport, it gets played in the, Shinty, the north of Scotland. Shinty's kind of more similar to field hockey in a way. Just because um, you could lift your I know you butt. there's there's definitely um, I know the Gaelic footballers and the AFL, they have an international rules football match. I'm not sure when they organised it, but they have like a kind of three match series um, with, a combined, with like a combined rules of the two. I'm sure that Hurling and Shinty have one as well, but I'm, I, I'm not too sure about that. Fair enough. I just, I've seen Shinty on the telly and it was just a mess of a sport, let's be honest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't say I've, I can't say I've covered that too much. Um, sorry, I was just going to say, you just obviously you mentioned international rules there. I think, to be honest, when obviously we, amateurs don't really play that because obviously it's a mix between the yeah. AFL and Gaelic football, but that's for me that kind of look, looked like a really cool sport because it's kind of like a mix between Gaelic football, which I like, rugby, which I like, a bit of rugby tackling, a bit of Gaelic football. It seems like a perfect mesh. What's yeah, I'm, I mean, what's it? It's kind of an Irish person's. Like perfect sport right there, <laughs> but I think. But again, if, if if we're talking about rules, I think both AFL and GAA they can take they can take other other sports rules from it. I know that the uh, the GAA implemented the advanced mark rule mm. last year, um, quite controversial, but yeah. <laughs> um, but still, I mean, I've I've heard I've heard good stuff, and I've heard bad stuff, and it's 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 worth a go, isn't it? Yeah. No. Fair. Sorry, Simon. Back yeah. To- um- I was going to say, obviously, back to rugby or rugby sevens. Yes. Who's winning the Olympics for rugby wow. sevens? Wow. And are you getting up at one this morning to watch it? I am. I am. I am going out tomorrow, so I'd like my sleep. <laughs> I'll catch a little bit in the morning. Oh, yeah, it's on, isn't it? I'd like to say, I, as much as my heart says Fiji, I'm going to say the USA. Oh, that's, that's a good I'm one. I'm gonna like say that. the USA. I obviously the sevens hasn't been on too much since the pandemic. It hasn't been yeah. on at all, actually. It's been they had like a few smaller tournaments, but nothing to what it used to yeah. be. And I'm gonna say the USA have a full. They have a fully capable squad of winning that gold medal. I think Perry Baker and Carla Niles are the two best sevens players in the world. And yeah. totally when they're on here. when they're on top form, I don't think anyone's stopping. They're freaks of nature. They are. I I remember when I saw Perry Baker in the flesh for the first time, and honestly, I I couldn't notice when he was on that side of the pitch to that side of the pitch. He was just that quick. He, he's ridiculous. Yeah, I looking for. I love sevens in the Olympics. It was so good last Olympics. Obviously, GB got to the final, but. <laughs> Also, hopefully we well, do it again. I've, I've experienced so much final heartbreak in my life. I'm sure I can spare another. Mm. <laughs> I mean, except for Harlequins, but, you know. Right, but... we aren't talking about that. <laughs> right, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm away now. No, I'm not. <laughs> we, we did actually praise Harlequins that, uh, that week in the episode. That it, if, it was to, if we were to get beat by any team, it's got to be Harlequins. Quins fans so... aren't pricks. They're not Saracens fans. It's fine. <laughs> Jesus. Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, we've re- we've really brought out some emotions here. Um, no, um, I I live in an area with Saracens fans, so oh bless you. <laughs> <laughs> I I can't wait until everyone in my area not starts listening to this now. Um, no, I won't be um, allowed. I'm just fine. I'm going up north, anyways. <laughs> You're gonna but, be my um, problem. You're gonna be my problem in September. Yeah, yeah. But, um, what's it? <laughs> I'm. I think a lot of. I don't know how to say this. A lot of Saracens fans, my era, did. I did see with Harlequin shirts on after they got relegated. So I mean, glory hunters. Jeez. Uh, 
It's a bit, that's a bit dodgy, that. I'm not going yeah. to I don't, I don't agree. I do not agree. You stick with your team regardless. You stick I mean, with your cheating, trust... money-wasting team. Exactly. Trust me. trust me, I'm an Edinburgh fan. I know what heartbreak is. Do him. Rip. <laughs> Right, Sorry, thank, thank, thank you, Simeon. Cockroach, rip. Come on, that's like two. That's like just in two weeks, Jesus. I know. <laughs> um, speaking of Harlequins, Harvey, how happy are you? The like Marcus Smith is on the Lions tour, and like Joe Marlar has found his love for rugby again. And what do you think of uh, Hugh Jones joining? I, I want to. I think I'm going to take most of these questions to talk about Joe Marler because I watched that documentary not long ago. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. I think it was probably one of the most touching documentaries I've ever watched. Yeah. 100%. It, I think, obviously, I knew there were troubles going on at home. And I think there are with a lot of people, and I know a lot of people don't speak about it. And I think Joe Marler should really, of course, he's, you know, the, the, the joker on the pitch, the, the clowny guy makes everyone laugh and that's what he's known for but I know that there's just a lot of stuff that we don't see behind the scenes and to be honest that's that's a lot with that's a lot with tons of players yeah so I think I think it's really brave of him to open up like that and go into detail about how he's dealing with it and what's happening and how other people can do it too and I think that hopefully because mental health in men and sport isn't talked about enough and I know a lot of players that have cracked under pressure, including myself, yep. on the weight of expectation. And I think a lot of people have forgotten how to sort of just enjoy the sports they play. And it really does sort of mess up your your mentality a bit. And I think it's really brave of him to to come out and speak like that. And to be honest, the, the fact that he's found his love of rugby again is amazing. And Again, I wish him all the best and I hope that he enjoys probably his last few years here at Harlequins because he's been an absolute legend for the club and to be honest, I wouldn't take it any other way. Um, anyway, going on to Marcus. Um, <laughs> we all know, things, happier thoughts. We all know that I'm a massive fan of Marcus Smith. Um, I just, I, I think he's so electric. I've been saying it since I, since I saw my first match with him. He is. He was going to be an England future star, and I think I can't relate to you how how much I had frustration for Eddie in the years gone by where he hasn't picked Marcus, where he's just bloomed over him. I mean, it's not just Marcus. I I mean, I'm a Chiefs fan. There's there's no Simmons brothers in the squad, so we're on we're on Marcus (laughs) Smith now. The most important, Um, (laughs) and. I can't, I can't tell you how much I've been just devastated that he hasn't had a shot. And I always thought, you know, if there wasn't a shot from now, would there ever be? And I think in the nick of time, he's just had it. And not only that, in, in about five weeks, he went from having never played a, having never played a premiership playoff game hmm. to being champions, to having his first England call-up, to be called up to Lions during an England match and then to start for the Lions. I don't think anyone's... I, I don't think if you if you won the lottery, bought yourself a nice mansion in the countryside of, like, Canada, bought yourself about three million pound cars, I don't think life could get any better than Marcus Smith's did in that five weeks. And he's and it's not like he played so well for England. He scored a try on debut, and then the second game he didn't miss a kick, and then he was electric for the Lions. It was the it wasn't like he was he just showed form every time. He is again. I've been saying this for quite a while now. The man is amazing, and again, maybe there's too much expectation of him. I know that some people have been critical of him to having weak spots in his game. I know there's some there's some weeks. He hasn't turned up with his kicking boots and it's definitely at the team down on that side. But these players aren't robots, they're humans. They're, they, they make mistakes. I'm sure that we all have off days and they all have off days too. So, Yeah, well said. 100%, yeah. I'll give you a, I'll give you a tough one though because they're both 22. They're both taking the world of rugby by storm. 
Who's oh, I'm going to be what? so biased in this. I just know, I know you coming. are, but I'm just going. I'm just going <laughs> to say. It. I'm just going to ask anyway. Who's better, Marcus Smith or Roman Intermac? I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be realistic here. I'm gonna say Intermac. The man. The the man burst onto the scene two years ago. The Wales v France. Yeah. And the the Nations, international yeah. scene. The international scene two years ago when he was nineteen. Yeah. Not nineteen. Was he nineteen? Tw- 1920, 20, yeah. 1920 or something like that. He was, he was definitely 20 or thereabouts. And and people have looked at him as potentially one of the best fly halves in the Northern Hemisphere. Probably top five fly halves in the world since then. I think, again, he is... He's a mix of a, of a classic and a, and a modern 10. I think mm. that is something yeah. to be desired. And to be honest, I think Marcus is sort of the same player as well. But again, Roman's had his chances and he's taken them by by the throat and he's performed really well. I mean, he's come so close to winning Six Nations twice. Well, I mean, one of them he was out for. But again, he he shone brightly. And I think Marcus has too, but I think... Without without being biased, Roman has shown just a little bit brighter. Yeah. That's fair. Um, so if Roman was uh, Scottish, English, Welsh, or Irish, would he be in that Lions squad right now? Yeah, hundred percent. He'd be I, I, I sadly, of, I sadly think, I, I think he would have pushed out Finn Russell of the squad. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. And he would have debate, and I think he would have debatably started over Dan Bigger. I think. I would have put Rum in over Dan Berger if I, I got th- the choice. It's up to Gats, to be honest. I mean, he's got he's got a plan. Some of us don't agree with it in principle, but he's got a plan. It's worked. And we trust in Gats. That's all I say. <laughs> we trust in Gats. I've in been Gats doing that trust. for 12 long years. <laughs> it hasn't brought you home a World Cup, but I mean, oh, we'll pass over that. That's because oh. of poor Irish referees. Oh, he's done it better. Better about the referees, Simeon. It's fine. We've had we've had poor French referees before. I mean, <laughs> not mentioning South African refs because uh, bad flashbacks. I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, he was French. <laughs> Greg Jaber was South African. Was, was he? I think yes. he's French. Uh, no, it's French name. But oh, either, <laughs> either, we've been messed up by referees. Big time. <laughs> I've never done that to any team. Never. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, don't worry. There's a few players who disagree after this week. <laughs> oh, well, that's poor. Um, oh, I... Harvey, speaking of the Lions, do you think the Lions will go all the way and win the Test Series? I think, I mean, what's it? There's three matches and we've won one of them. I think we're one match away and we're two, and they're two matches away. I think... Again, it's swung in our favour and we've got the upper hand, but you can never know, to be honest. I mean, rugby is such a fantastic game with twists and turns um, that South Africa have the ability and definitely can go on to win it. But I am going to say Lions because I am a biased little child. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've actually, we've actually managed to do British and Irish Lions this week. We've got a Scottish. We have actually, got, yeah. Well, oh, well done, there there go. Hey. I feel like we all should have saved our lion shirts for this, but um, next time we could, you can, you're always welcome to come sorry, back if you on, if you on, want to come. Sorry, on matching stuff, did anyone notice? And I mentioned it. The whole South African pack had the same boots. They were bright orange and yellow boots. Sponsors. Yeah, yeah. sponsors. No, but it's just like they must. Someone must have gone into group chat, lads. Should we all wear the same boots? It'll look great, and then they just look like twats. Imagine, that, yeah, but just imagine if you if you turned up with your team and you just thought, all right, lads, do you just do you just fancy turning up in the same boots for a laugh? Imagine how how killed you'd be in the group chat. You would, yeah. I just, oh, it'd be awful because there's there's always. Because everyone's got their own taste in boots. There's always the winger with the flashy boots and then the prop with like the old 1980s Adidas <laughs> and just looks like a psycho. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is that seconds team rugby right there. <laughs> your, second, you the... your, second, your second 15. Or you get is... the optimum, tr- optimum boots 
which are just awful to look at. And then you've got oh. the person who's never who's played their first game and they got the um, Sports Direct Patrick ones. Hey, <laughs> big up I, I have my, <laughs> I had um, my first pair of rugby boots. They were they were like a really off brand called High Tech. They're about fifteen pounds, and I bought them from my local school shop. And when I told you the first blister I ever got in my match was so poor. Oh God! So I've I've gone Adidas, never looked never looked back. I've gone for a few, but Adidas is where I'm. St- I've got three pairs of Adidas boots. So I'm sticking to them at the moment. I, I I can never turn back from Adidas boots. They're amazing. I I, ne- I don't buy any of the new stuff. I always I always buy some of the older stuff. But yeah. I might I mean, need to buy. I might need to buy like longer stud boots now because I'm a forward now. So that's, yeah. boots are just boots are just expensive nowadays. So yeah, yeah. Un- that's boots unreal. are so exp- if you if you bought a pair of boots like six years ago, they'd be about fifty pounds. Now you have to pay out the upwards of ninety. It's stupid. It's... Adidas, if you're listening, because I'm not. <laughs> I buy football boots because they're cheaper. I always get football boots for But again. But, but again, it's gone the same up with football boots. It's gone the same True. up with everything. I think pr- price in general poor. This is this is the government's fault. <laughs> Boris, if you're listening, <laughs> big buzzer. Boris, can we make can we get a ten p Fredo back? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, That's the important stuff. <laughs> I hope, you know what? Boris loves rugby so much. I hope he listens to this. I know. Yeah. Was, yeah. I was, <laughs> well, Boris, one on one. Boris, just to let you know, after you twatted that child in Japan, um, it was a forearm <laughs> to the head. It's a red card. Off you go, mate. <laughs> You've heard it here from the TikTok ref. You're not getting away with that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, um, Harry, I've, uh, I, think it, I think this might be a difficult question for you. Obviously, before we, uh, we started recording, you're showing us your Otago uh, um, jersey there. So what is the favourite rugby jersey that you own and maybe one that you don't own? Wow. Um, first of all, it's my Southland one. I really okay. want the Targo one. Um, no, it's not Southland. It's Northland. My bad. Um, <laughs> I, I I would like an Otago one. But um, so my favorite one I own, I own a 2003 Cougar Harlequins one, like the classic, like collar, not any of the tight bit stuff. Cotton. It was a lovely jersey. Um, I actually had it on before this and I was sort of just like, am I overdressed? Yeah, I am. <laughs> um, so I took it off and wore this one instead. Um, so that's probably the favorite one I own. And when I go back to Harlequins eventually, I will be wearing that. Um, one I'd like to own, and I don't know whether I can get myself a replica or I don't know whether I'd fork out for the uh, for the gen for the authentic one. But a, uh, I think it's the 1995 World Cup England one. It's just plain white with the navy and red stripes on the sleeve. I think that's a classic jersey. If not, Canada 95, I think, is one of the most iconic of all time. Yes. I'm, 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 I'm a sucker for ugly rugby jerseys, so I will 100% take that in my collection. Or if not, I'll take the current Romania one because that is an absolute eyesore. Oh, Do you know what is a good one? It's a current I, I like that. Oh, it's, lot, it's so comfortable. So I like it. Macron's good, yeah. Matt, yeah, Macron's good. That? I've got quite a few Macron football shirts. I don't think I've got a Macron um, rugby shirt. I get a Welsh or Scottish one. You've got a good range there. I'd rather... Go, go, uh, Scottish. go Scottish or better. I'd rather buy a Saracen shirt, if I'm brutally honest. <gasps> right, and and that, that's, that's the end of the podcast. <laughs> that's it. He's done it. Harvey's ruined it. No, um, no um, I, th- I think the Romania one's a Macron one, so... Um, if if yes, anyone yes, can yes. if anyone can hook me up with that one, um, I don't know. I'll, I'll buy you. I'll buy you a Fredo. One Fredo for a Romanian jersey. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Grant. I mean, it's it's more than ten p these days, so <laughs> it's worth it. Inflation. That's the word I was thinking of. Inflation. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna ask you a, a very early prediction question, Harvey. Um, Six Nations, 2022. Oh, oh. Full, full table, last to first. Who you got? Where and why? All right. Um, I remember I made a. I remember I made a Six Nations preview video for this year. Um, as an interview, as like a, as like an interview evidence 
for a, a company which I can't disclose the name of that I was going to work for. All right. Um, they didn't come back to me, so um, this is why I'm not disclosing their name. Um, I don't want to embarrass them. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I'm probably going to... So I'd, I'd like to think I have, I have my knowledge tipped up, but in sixth, I'm probably going to put Italy. I mean... Oh. Oh, that's a bit of a shocker. Oh. Um, to be honest, I think I think Italy have looked their best in maybe about three years. I think they've got some really, really good youth coming through. I mean, the under twenty side are they're pretty they're pretty good. They're pretty decent. I'd say Paolo Garbisi and Stephen Varney could be a half back pairing to look out for. Uh Ioanni yeah. on the wing, Carlo Canna. I think if some younger forwards come through. Of course, we have Jake Pledgery, who is prob- probably had been Italy's best player for a while now. Um, I think if they can get some more shining youth through to gain some experience, I genuinely think in 10 years they could challenge for the Six Nations title. But for now, I am yeah. putting them bottom. Yeah. Sure. Um, <laughs> oh, <sighs> this is tough. In fifth, I feel like I feel like I'm just going to slaughter every one of you off <laughs> in the list. So, in fifth, I'm going to go for Scotland. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> no, you and I don't agree. No, no. Um, <laughs> I think again, Scotland. Scotland plays some sexy, sexy rugby, and to be honest, have looked their best <laughs> for a while now. I just genuinely think this, this is no offense to Scotland. I genuinely just do think that there are better teams than them. They are, oh. they are, they are, they are their best for a while, but there are just better teams. I like from an Englishman. This this hurts me to say this, but I actually I love the Scottish team currently. I think they are a great back unit, and again, I think Hamish Watson and Jamie Ritchie might also be my favourite blanker pairing in the whole yeah. of world rugby right now so I can't look over Scotland but I am going to put them fifth I'm sorry Murray oh, that's cool. um, <laughs> you, you've said nice you've said nice things and we've got the Kolkata Cup so <laughs> <laughs> oh, you had to put this on us um, I had to in fourth I'm going to go for Ireland I'm oh, not a better than them come on what's going on uh, I am um... <laughs> Again, Ireland are a good unit. They're one of the best teams in the world. But again, they're, they're up against some of the best teams in the world. Yeah. It's going to be a tough competition, I think. I've, I've been saying it for a while now. I'm still not certain on Conor Murray, whether he's even a starter. I think Johnny Sexton definitely showed some weaknesses. Last Six Nations, injury problems. And to be honest, I don't know, apart from maybe Joey Carberry, who's been quite injury prone over the last few years, who else is going to take that 10 shirts? They need to bring back Ian Manigan. They need to bring back Ian Manigan. Well, no, what's his name? Um, Jack Carty, Connacht. He's not a bad little 10. Billy Barnes, you could go go Billy Barnes. I don't know know whether he's Ireland. No, (laughs) I don't even, even as an even, yeah, even as an English fan, sorry, um, I don't think I could ever see Billy Burns play willingly. Fair. Um, <laughs> Fair no, I feel I'm... like I've offended so many people on this podcast. I'm just hoping no one listens to this. <laughs> <laughs> like um, we... you, yeah, we've gone Scotland, Ireland. Anyone who likes Billy Burns, <laughs> uh, Boris, jo- Boris Johnson. <laughs> I'm out fine. Oh yeah, no, that's 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 class. There's a reason for that one. Um, I think in third, I'm probably going to put Wales. Uh, I, I get, I'll, I'll take, I'll take third. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll be I nice to you. Well, yeah, I'll take third. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say that that this year was a fluke because it wasn't. It was. <laughs> no, it bloody wasn't. Other teams can't keep their discipline. That's why we won. It wasn't a fluke. I do think that. Yes, they may have had some lucky calls, just a couple. But ultimately, they are still a great unit and they really did play some good rugby. 
And I think ultimately there are a lot of teams that lost their heads. I know in the England match, England lost their heads and Wales dominated on that. I know that Wales picked off on some of France's mistakes. So they're a good little unit and we're deserved winners of, well, semi-deserved um, of this, this, this year's Six Nations. But I just don't see a repeat, if I'm brutally honest. I to be fair, like, after the Argentina game, I'm a bit like mm, I'm a bit worried. But we'll see how awesome goes when we get the Lions back. Second, I'm gonna go with England. Oh, thank God for that! <laughs> oh, so I was like, he's gonna say England's gonna win. You're all, you're, <laughs> you're you're all just cheering inside right now. I can just <laughs> yeah. tell. Anything for England, not winning. Um, I think. I think the the summer internationals has allowed Eddie to sort of experiment with some of the upcoming players and I would like to see some of them that have worked in the setup. I do think there's a lot to be desired from some of the current players in the England setup. So I'd like to see him at least have a go and I'm not expecting it to be truly successful because he has gone with major what's the word? Majorly majority. the same team. The majority of the same team um, for quite a few years now. And it's a worked unit, but I don't know if it's just come, come to the end of its path and he needs to go into something new. I'm not expecting for the experiment to be a complete success, but I do expect at least a title challenge. Uh, and that only leaves one team, and that is France. I think they were unfortunate not to win last year. It's not even last year's, it's this year's. It's this year, yeah. yeah. It feels weird now that we're talking about this in, what's this, July? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think they're unfortunate to miss out, if I'm brutally honest. Um, if we hadn't beat them, they probably would have gone on to win. But, I mean, what's it? They're an amazing unit. They're an amazing young side. And to be honest, I think a Six Nations would do them right well leading up to the World Cup. Mm. I yeah, think that's that, fair. that is one of the ways to flex their muscles and tell the Southern Hemisphere teams that they're not here to mess around. Yeah, so, valid I'd like, point. I'd like to see that come from them because, they, again, they are a good side. They beat Australia in, uh, in the Summer Internationals. Yep. And I just think it's time for them to flex their muscles up to their home tournament because that's the one they're really going to want to win. Yeah. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, I agree with two of the six. <laughs> the last and first I agree with. I don't know. I think, I, I think, I, everyone, can agree, I think everyone can agree with last. I mean... <laughs> well, I think you can pretty much all agree on first. I just think the middle... the U- GV, so United Kingdom plus Ireland... Sure, what I say myself there. The, the British there. Isles. <laughs> the British Isles. Yeah, I just started saying I was having Northern Irish head on there. Um, the Lions the teams. I'll, yeah. Yeah, whatever. That, <laughs> that area. Yeah. Very complicated. Celtic Nations in England. There we go. It's, yeah, it's so that. tight. But like, even look at this year, like Scotland, so, beat, Scotland beat England. Uh-huh. Uh, and... I've I'm got my fried. flag up. I, I might just, you know, wait, <laughs> start did, wait, it. Sorry, did Ireland and Wales also be England? Yep. Yes. Oh yeah, they did. Oh yeah, did. Yes. Yeah. You were, you were, you were talking about this to me the other day. Don't, don't say you didn't even answer to that question. Hmm? Yeah, I didn't no. Get any of that. The dog <laughs> shot in. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> um, yeah. So, like, even just look at this year's Six Nations. Like, Scotland did well. They had to get one more point to beat France to finish second. They didn't get it, so they finished fourth. And like, it's so. But that's compact. what you're going to get. Obviously, in a... you, get, you get last, and Italy sadly didn't do anything. The Six Nations, they bombed out, and then, but like from fifth to first, really, it was ridiculously this what, tight. This is what you're going to get in a sixteen competition because, you know, it's not it's not even like there's home and away fixtures. You play one fixture each against each other. Yeah, you've got. Every every single of the five games is valuable. You can't yep. afford to slip up in any of them. Like even against Italy, if if they play their best and they can take away a bonus point from you because that can shatter you, every point matters. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, well said. You know, <coughs> if you, if you've the moment you, I I've always felt this: the moment you've lost the Six Nations match is the moment you know you're not going to win, and that's just one match out of four. Yeah, yeah, and. Th- that me last year, 
we lost to Scotland, and I was just like, that's it, we're done. We're done. I was the opposite. I was like, is this our year? And then Ferguson got, well, no, Ferguson got a red card. Ferguson got a red card. Well, three if you don't count Italy. I didn't really count Italy. Not disrespectful to Italy, but uh, we're at home. <laughs> with, you again, were, you know, to be fair, you hammered Italy, bro. You like convincingly. Oh, again, yeah, we had we had a whale of a time. <laughs> but Italy against France, I think that first match, there was a lot more than just the scoreline to talk about. And yeah. the Italy-England game as well. They played well. Especially, yeah, especially that, because... They I scored didn't... in the first five minutes. Because Ioane is a beast and will be a beast. Yeah. And I do think that that Italy side do have something to deliver. And they have shown glimmers of that. And to be honest, a team that usually turns up in the last 20 minutes turned up in the first 20 minutes. Mm. And I don't know if they panicked. They weren't <sighs> in that situation before. But they just didn't get the job done. No. Yeah. And then once, uh, once momentum went France's way, then it's just, just same old Italy. Yeah, they did a really weird thing this year. They started like their props weren't the strongest props, had the strongest props on the bench, and then half an hour in, they'd bring them on, and went, what is the point in that? It's... It was such a weird tactic, and I went, it doesn't work, stop doing it, just play their strongest team to start with, and have a solid well, bench. I've, 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 I've thought about this, and I've always thought, like, you can, you can start all the strongest players you like, but there are some players that work well off the bench and I, I always think that as much as Daly is a world class player I think I'd I think he is certified on my bench for Lions because in that 23 shirt he mm-hmm. can come on as an impact he's a clutch player he you know if, if some players Dan Bigger Owen Farrell I'm sure that they can't bomb some long range kicks like he can he can come on at centre, he can come on in the back three. And to be honest, he can just change the game where he's needed. So that's why I've always said, you know, I'd I'd uh, I'd a hundred percent have Daly on the bench. Yeah. No shade to him. But he'd just come on <coughs> and give the R Lions that extra little bit of energy they need at the end of the match. Yeah, I agree. I did I did that. So when I used You'll probably get asked as well in your questions, like drop bench start. Yeah, and I always I try not to be biased or or anything like that. I always try and just explain re- each reason. And I've always said, if you can play multiple positions very well, you're on my bench. Yeah, like but even think... if you even if you're a better player, you're, you're going more on the bench. Yeah, you're more valuable coming off the bench. Like you just said, you're more valuable off the bench because you can cover. Oh, 100%. Because, you know, <clears throat> again, rugby is a tough sport. You're going to get injured. You're going to get tired. And if if you're uncertain where that's going to be on the pitch, someone like Daly's going to be valuable because he can just slot in anywhere. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. I totally agree with that. I mean, I, I kind of wrote off Elliot Daly this season, to be honest. But well, how much of a mug do you look like now? <laughs> <laughs> well, he was pretty no, poor last I did, night. I did, I did oh. own up to it that as soon as I knew why he was picked for the Lions because he can cover so much. He's got that long boot, and if it came down to it, yeah. But I was just like, his form hasn't been the best. But no, you always I, I hear, agree. you always hear that like the Lions jersey does something to a player, or the player yeah. does something to a jersey, and whatever. I think I think there are some players. Is, there are some players that just step up to the big moments. Yeah, he's a big game player. Yeah, absolutely. I th- there, are, there are some players that you can never imagine playing in these big matches, but once they're there, they absolutely tear up the pitch. And I think yeah. Elliot Daly, obviously he's had a year of basically awful rugby. He's been playing <laughs> the championship all year. And this is no shade to the championship because there are some all right teams in there. But they're just it, it's not great quality rugby for him to be playing because there's such a massive gap between the, the premiership and the championship. He moved to he moved to Saracens hoping he can play his best rugby, but then you know, his first season he gets relegated and his second he's playing in 
basically what feels like Sunday league for him. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's I think that went for every Saracens player this season, or at least the ones that didn't go out on loan. Um so honestly, I think we did see that in the Six Nations because the Six Na- by the Six Nations, the championship season hadn't even started. Yeah. Saracens had lost to Ealing Trailfinders twice. And before Cornwall. the Six Nations. I don't think the Cornwall wa- match was before the Six Nations. Was it not? I thought it was. Well, nah. It's even funnier than if it wasn't before the Six Nations. Because <laughs> if it was, <laughs> then we'd actually be in form. Well, yeah. I mean, oh, wait. I mean, did you see our Six Nations campaign? I don't think there's anything to say that we were on form, but. Yeah. No, you, but you, you had the bat that your spine of the team was Sargent's players who hadn't played. Yeah. And the, they were. Well, I mean, uh, especially the Scotland game, first 20 minutes, it zooms in and Owen Farrell is like heavy breathing. And I don't mean like a little bit like he's just on a big run. It's like he's proper. Oh, yeah, puffing, no. Puffing out and his arse, essentially. Exactly. And that's why I think <clears throat> Saracens could have laid out their C team and still won the championship comfortably. Oh, easily. Absolutely. So that's my argument now. Why didn't more players make the jump up to, to Premiership? I know a couple of players left. I know a couple of players got loaned out. Why didn't more players want to be loaned out? I'm sure that it would do. I'm sure that it would have kept their careers, would have kept their form alive, especially. So mm. I'm not sure why more players didn't take the leap as, <coughs> as much as players like Nick Azike and did Ben Youngs also? Not Ben, ben Youngs. Ar- ben Earls. Not yeah, Ben Earl and um, Richard Wigglesworth. Max Bailens as well. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. So they all went up. And they played well. Exactly. And that wasn't even, you know, the likes of Mara Toji, Elliot Daly. Um, oh, we could have Mara sure, Toji at Chiefs. That would have been amazing. I'm sure, um, didn't Sean Maitland, <coughs> did Sean Maitland go? No, Sean no, Maitland Sean, stayed. Sean Maitland, Maitland stayed. stayed. I know he was ru- He but, was, you know. was rumoured to move to Glasgow or even to Edinburgh. But that never happened because... No, I know that, I know that Mara was linked <coughs> with a... Uh, Racing ninety two as well. But that we can't play, can't, can't play for England then. Yeah, exactly. I think yes. that's that's one of my big things with rugby, and I I, I want to talk about this. I know the top fourteen has a rule mm-hmm. um, where I think fifteen of the of the match day twenty three have to be eligible for the league's con- the league's country team, mm-hmm. um, and I know they're implementing that into the Premiership. But honestly, I'd be happy to scrap it. I'd yeah. like to see I'd like to see more international moves. <coughs> and I'd and that would help build up leagues around the world. Yeah. I agree, hundred percent. I'd love I mean, to see but again, like, you know, loan you could loan what's it? You could loan young English players out to somewhere like in Russia or in Georgia. That could help bring up games there. I think it would just help the game just more internationally. I've been saying this for a while now. I mean Again, football's the biggest international sport in the world. And they haven't got transfer restrictions in terms yeah. of countries. So, so Harry Kane can move to Australia and still play for England. Yeah, I, no, yeah. I think that's something rugby needs. In I Wales, think... it's very odd because you've got this whole the 60 cast rule which doesn't help Wales at all because you look at the Welsh players who go to the Premiership, Dan Bigger, well, ever since he's left the Ospreys and gone to... The Prem, he's been on for much better form. So, exactly. I know George North is over here as well. No, George North's back. He's our Spurs now. He was over here. He, he was, was Northampton. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, 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 Salad Towns never won at Bath. Yeah, I know Cameron Redpath's also down there. I know he's not Scott. I think I know he's Scottish, yes. but <laughs> down in Bath as well. I know you've got your Bath jersey on right now. Oh, I just fancy a change tonight. I always try and wear a different top. So, <laughs> Cameron, the Cameron, this is the Cameron Redpath appreciation episode. I yes. love Cameron Redpath. Yeah, um, yeah, he is a good centre. Like, to be uh, fair, yeah, no, I, he... well, I am just on about the rules, like how you said Wales is a bit funny. England, you have to play for an English club to play for England. France mm-hmm. is pretty much the same. I'm glad. I, I honestly am chuffed that Scotland don't have that rule. It wouldn't work in Scotland. You can't. There's, there's not enough two. You, you have two yeah. clubs. That's, yeah. that's the brutal honesty of it. You have two clubs. Yeah, that's it. 
and we don't like, have, I, and, I, and it's run by they're both run by the SRU. There's not yeah. there's not a private owner. Exactly. There's not mass funding. That's I mean, why like all these players like Duhan, Van this, Derva, Rory Sutherland, and all that are leaving. I know this is. I know I'm talking about because <coughs> all of you support teams in the in the Pro Fourteen. Yeah. I think, I think it doesn't help. Um, I don't think it helps the scheme of Irish, Welsh and Scottish rugby at all. No, it doesn't. It doesn't because it's almost like, well, again, you don't, I think the best thing about English, the English rugby thing, it's, it's, it's working your way up the leagues as well. But not only that, it's that there's loads of teams to play for. Exactly. I mean, even championship team. Like I know we're saying they weren't great, but they're they're a good pathway. Like you can't they're, go wrong with oh, the Oh, oh, hundred percent. Like players from bloody Jersey have a team. You know what I mean? And that's a way yeah. of professional rugby. Um, you know, you, uh, Sean, you have teams for each province. Mm. I mean, if well, how much would it change the landscape of Irish rugby if you had your own league? But let's say like four teams from every province. Well, it'd be better in terms of player production, right? Exactly. And again, that would help the national team. That would help mm-hmm. the IRFU. <clears throat> and even if you did... Uh, that's why I think the Mice 10 Cup is, is such a good league in terms of player production. Yeah. And probably why New Zealand have been as, as successful as they have. Why is that? Put... That and there's still Fijians and Samoans, but it's like... <laughs> oh, it's fine. We've been we we've we've stole a couple of them as well. So I mean, yeah, I can't I can't say anything. We've stole South Africans, Kiwis, Australians, English. We'll take anything. It doesn't matter. I mean, well, <laughs> we're, Ireland took a took a took a Kiwi, and that didn't really work out for the best of it. No. But... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I totally get what you said, Harvey. It's, it's I mean, speaking as a Scotland fan. I've been pushing for even just another pro team in the Highlands. It's untouched territory up there, or the borders. Look at all the players that come from Hoyk, Melrose, and all that in the Scotland setup. And now, I think there's give them, give them a team. It makes sense. There's rugby everywhere. Yeah, there's rugby everywhere across the countries. I think they're just untapped markets. Yep, we've got two northern teams in England. Two northern teams. We've got Sale and Newcastle. And likewise, Rugby League, in the Super League, they've got no Southern teams. They had London Broncos for it, but they got relegated. Yeah. Imagine how different it would be if more, con- if, uh, if more clubs were around for more of the country. Yeah, and, no, totally, uh, how much it would just help? How much it would help the club? <clears throat> I mean, again, I'm going to go on to another sport here, but something like GAA, right? Mm-hmm. You've got You've got so many clubs in their county, and you've got a large player pool for that county. Then, yeah, I mean, even in London, we've got twenty, we've got twenty odd GAA clubs. Not all of them are either code, but you could say like, because some of them are cross code, you you could probably say there's about like twelve for each. Yeah, that's still twelve clubs times about thirty players. That's still quite a big pool to pick from when you're looking mm-hmm. at the county team. Yeah. So you need to I feel like there needs to be more clubs just localized to more areas. We don't need more rugby like Midlands rugby clubs. No. Yeah. We need more in the we need more in northern northern England, stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. You spot on there. Yeah, totally agree. I think it's something that all govern rugby governing bodies need to have a look at and have a serious discussion. Especially about. and um I am going on to a bit of rugby league, but I would like to see more southern teams as well because yeah, yeah, there are two. Like, you could even check in. I mean, you could even extend it so you have some like a Scottish or a Welsh rugby league team we, checked in there. Well, we have we have two Welsh rugby league teams in. Oh, you've uh, got oh South Wales South Wales Riders. No, we've got um. Is it North West? No, North Wales Crusaders and West Wales Raiders. Yeah, West Wales Raiders, that's the one I'm thinking of, yeah. You've, those, got, those... You, you've got Crusaders and Raiders. That's laziness. <laughs> that's the only... T- you've got two Welsh rugby league clubs and that's it. 
Yeah, it's I, so I, I'm in the league setup now in Wales, and it's like they've obviously through lockdown they've just hired so many referees. They've converted or like got on so many union refs to do league now, um, and they are think, trying to grow it. I think that union and league should work more closely together. I agree. I think there's been too much of a divide in it. I think it's my favorite thing from league that they need to bring into union is I don't know why like. A, in league, they're encouraged to use the names of each player. When in union, it should just be numbers. I think the ne- using names as players is such a good idea. Um, in Super League, you do get <coughs> squad numbers. So, like the the number thirteen has been synonymous with Kevin Sinfield and Andy Farrell, and then the number, or oh, whatever, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> you know, you, you get a feel for the players, and <clears throat> again. I do think that rugby league and rugby union should work more closely. Like double headers, I think there should be more stadium shares mm. because then you know you'll have rugby fans going to both of the codes. I think, to say the least, hasn't been the most successful with um, Sale and Salford. No, I don't. I, no. I don't. I haven't seen too much crossover of that. But I know Newcastle Thunder, the rugby league team's on an up, and that's because Newcastle Falcon fans have come over to watch. Yeah. So I think, you know, if I'm sure if what's it, if we got more Northern Rugby League teams, more more Northern Rugby Union teams, more Southern Rugby League teams, I'm sure there's something that the R the RFU and the RFL can do. Mm. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Totally agree with you. Um, I think that's quite a good point to leave it on. Big talking point. What other people think yeah. about it? And yeah, I know that we've we've <coughs> kind of made this the the sports connection podcast. Today. Oh, fine. But it's a good change. It's, good we've got <coughs> it's a good change. change. If, if if any of you like other sports, then I mean, this is probably the episode for you. Like, yeah. If you if you like, I mean, if, you like, like Har- if you like Harvey, then definitely give it a listen. If you like Harvey's stuff, he knows much. he definitely knows what he's on about. <laughs> I try. Doesn't matter I seem what like sport I do. it is. You know, you. I you, like to see that. <laughs> you definitely do. Don't panic about that. Would. I'm not bullshitting you here. You definitely know your stuff. Yes, the one that you. caught me off guard, and the reason I questioned your age at the start of this, the episode was when I asked you like who your favourite player for rugby league ever was or growing up was, and you said Jason Robinson. I'm like, how do you? Because Jason Robinson, like, yeah. you know, I mean, well, like, West League it was in, like the nineties, and it was old highlights. I mean, <clears throat> what's it? I've I've seen. If any of you have never seen. Was it the oh god? Was it not the 1998 Super League Grand Final that Trey scored in that? Please yeah. go watch that. That was electric. One of the greatest and, Grand Final moments of all time. And if you and if you're a big Union fan and refuse to watch League, just watch Jason Robinson in the 2003 World Cup and the 2001 Lions Tour. Exactly. Yeah. Because I think uh, again, <clears throat> more players, more referees, more fans should cross over because I know it's. It, it's technically two different sports, but at the same time, it's the same principle. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'm going to ask you one last question before we... Right. Off. Right. One player from Super League to Union and one player from the NRL to Union. You can't pick two of us a check because that's already confirmed. So, Wow. Right. And you have to pick the club that they go to. It's, right. Just yeah, for okay. fun. I want to say Harlequins. Yeah, that's fine. Harlequins, you can tell them. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to. Um, actually, if we're gonna stay on the stay on the if we're gonna stay on Harlequins, um, I think our front row probably needs a little bit of propping up. Okay, I, I don't think it's perfect. I see, I see what you did there, propping front row. Hey, I didn't actually mean to do that, but <laughs> um, I take Alex Wormsley from St Helens. Fair enough. Play him as a um, play him as a tight head. Right. Fair enough. I, I think he'd, your, I think he'd be class. And your NRL. To Union oh. draft pick, oh, it's got to be Caelan Punker, hasn't it? Yeah, it's got to be Caelan. He's Punker. electric. I think he's got so much to offer to Union. Where's he going? Oh, I'm gonna put him. I'm gonna put him as the Highlanders. I nice. think with it, with it, with a team. I, I know he could play for the All Blacks one day. Yeah, and um, I think to be honest, um, the Highlanders have had many great fullbacks. Over the years, mm. Ben Smith. Smith. It comes to mind, of course. Yeah, and mm. I think Caelan Caelan Pongu could be the one to continue the legacy of the fifteen shirt. 
there yeah, we I'm, I'm actually I'm all up for that. I mean, two of us are checks joining the Blues next year. I cannot wait for that. I'd love to see that, and I, I'd love to see some more Union players make the make the jump into league as well. Because... Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, thank you for coming on and discussing no all this sorts is, of sports. This is this has been a lovely hour that I've shared. So yeah. thank you guys. Thank you, you are welcome much. back anytime you want back on. Thank you very much. Remember, guys, give Harvey a like and a follow on his TikTok. He he definitely knows his stuff. Don't listen to him. He's not giving himself enough credit. <laughs> Any if you're just a general sport fan go on Harvey Allen's page because it's unreal. There's rugby, there's rugby league, there's Formula One, cricket, GAA, football, basketball, tennis, I'm guessing you could cover fucking badminton at this rate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have Goals, a go. Baby. I mean, Goals is where I want to see the next content in. Oh, Lord, you're asking a bit too much there. And, I mean, it's the Olympic season, so, yeah, this man knows what he's on about. I mean, he's 16 years old, he talks like he's in his 40s with the knowledge he's got. So there we go. I can't praise him enough. It's unreal how much knowledge that he has. So yeah, give him a follow. Give him a like. Yeah, unreal. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So yeah, Harvey, thanks a million for coming on. And everyone, for the next episode of Guest Thursdays, we will see you all next week. Goodbye for now. Yeah. Bye.